A few years ago, my father apologized for my childhood. I was cleaning my apartment, and my dad called me, and I did something very uncharacteristic that I never do. I saw it was him, and I answered it. And he said, I'm sorry. I was afraid of what the other parents would think because you were so feminine. I have been it all. I have called myself a gay man. I have called myself transgender. I have gone by gender queer, gender fluid, non-binary. I love you too. <laughs> I even had a straight face in college. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I thought that I would have sex reassignment surgery. And I was told by society that there are only two labels, woman and man. I felt closer to woman than to man, and I felt closest of all to Wonder Woman. And there's a researcher, Purdy Bonds, who's a professor at Columbia University, and she did this study in regard to race, that society, regardless of their gender or gender identity, will view black people as aggressive and masculine, and Asian people as passive and feminine. The School Climate Survey found that one in 10 kids in elementary school were identified by their appearance or their, um, the way they presented themselves as falling outside the gender labels, traditional gender labels and norms. And those kids were almost twice as likely to be bullied at school. And it gets worse when you enter high, I don't have to tell you. <laughs> it gets worse when you enter high school. Gender non-conforming high schoolers in the U.S. receive twice as much verbal harassment, twice as much physical harassment, and twice as much physical assault. And I doubt that if they had found the right label, if they had learned to call themselves the right thing, that that would have helped them escape the abuse. It can feel like finally there is nothing wrong with you once you have that word. But it's a devil's bargain because outside the label, whether you have one or not, before the label, there is nothing wrong with you already. I will say that again. There is nothing wrong with you. It is hard, really, really difficult work to learn to love yourself. And through my journey, learning to accept my father as a full human being, and having every label under the sun and learning to accept my self as a full human being. That has caused me to dream of a time when we might soften up on some of the labels and start to look at each other face to face. I know deep down that I am much bigger than a label, and I know that you are much bigger than one word. Thank you. You look so sad. You can stand the whole time. I didn't mean to. So raise your hand. What do you want to know from me? Yes. Yes. Will you marry me? Yes. You want to know what to do when your parents don't accept you? Yeah. That's a tough one. Uh, what I did was wait 30 years and then talk to them about it. I don't know if you want to do that. The answer always, always, always is do work to learn to love and accept yourself. And that can sound so hard. But actually as you do it, it becomes easier and easier. Did you, did you ever struggle to accept yourself? And if so, how did you do it? Like how did you finally accept yourself? <coughs> yes, is the answer. <laughs> Uh, as we all do. And it is that process I was talking about of trying on different labels. So experimenting with all that stuff and learning that that was okay. But the thing is, once you start to do that, you can see the best and the beauty in other human beings. 
Gore Vidal, this public figure, was asked by a reporter, did you lose your virginity to a man or to a woman? And Gore said, I was too polite to ask. <laughs> that seems right to me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yes.